Okay, guys, welcome. This is the last session for for the course. It's um, module 12. So if we go down to module 12, if we open up, it's the revision for the Excel portion of the course. Uh, module 12 has the workshop link, and obviously you've probably already done your tests, so it's one of the one of the tests which has been uh, enabled. Uh, for this exercise, you need to download this question document, the Word document. Please don't download the answers until you've actually given it a go and watched the presentation and followed in your own own footsteps. You know uh, to actually find out what uh, how to attempt the question. So I'm going to download this um, this Word document, and here it is. Right. So <coughs> here's the sample sample question, which is set usually section B in the uh, in the exam, but obviously uh, <coughs> you may not be doing. The, the hard copy, which this is a copy of the previous exam, but uh, you still have to know the, know the basics, right? So just to cover it, I'm going to do a presentation on all of these items, the question, the questions down here, so no need to actually look at the questions at the moment, but um, uh, as we go through the exercise and the presentation, I'd, I'd, I'd hope that you'd, you'd pause the video and actually go through and try to answer the question before I give you the answers, right? But I will do that in, in, in a second. So what, what uh, students in the past have been given in the exam is this screenshot of a worksheet within a spreadsheet and this screenshot is is basically keeping keeping track of a fish market uh, weekly weekly basis sales right so for for a week what did we sell who sold what and so forth and all the discounts so I'm going to switch over the presentation now and let's let's just run through what you would actually have to do in <coughs> uh, to answer the questions in the word document hopefully you've got the word document open um, but here we go. Right? So um, <coughs> there's the screenshot which is in the Word document, which you should be able to see of the spreadsheet, and we can see that we've got uh, you know columns, <coughs> uh, A, A, I, and so forth. We've got some data over here which are discount rates. We've got some data here about you know summary data about uh, agent sales, how much they sold, and so forth. <coughs> now uh, the first question, question one ask for um, it says in E2 uh, or E2 to E4 which means this guy here from so cost per kilo we have to calculate um, using or you have to actually in, in this example write what formula would actually exist within this cell to actually calculate the cost per kilo right? and cost per kilo of what right so we're actually going to be looking for uh, some kind of um, order type to get this 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 value right so where do we actually look these values up and you notice down here we've got a cost per kilo table so this red area uh, would be the table that we would use within obviously a v lookup function right so uh, <coughs> the the table array here has got two columns one two and what we would be doing is we would be looking for the particular type of order which would be listed in here that happens to be the very first one in the area in the region and uh, we would want to return column 2 back right so you can see here already it's got cost per kilo for boneless rain, rainbow trout is $7.99 so the way you'd physically do it would be you'd grab boneless uh, rainbow trout you look through the list well, there it is, and in column two is the value that I want back, right? So it's it's seven point nine. Now, <coughs> uh, important thing to remember: the lookup has four parameters. So the first parameter would be the lookup value, which is C two, C two, and then we would say where do we look for this this um, this parameter in a in a table? So in the very first first column. Of, of a table, so our table area would be B18 to C26, so that would be the table array that we're going to be doing performing the lookup in, and the return value is in column 2, right, which is this guy here. So the answer to the question would be C2, and then the, the region or the table that we're looking up two and false is the very last parameter remember it can be either a true or a false false means that we're looking for an exact match and it's not a ranged match 
and remember the golden rule if my lookup value has letters or alphabet alphabet in it so it's got B O N and so forth in here so immediately you just set that false right <coughs> so there's question one question two says uh, in in the answer in question one above uh, to avoid <coughs> void so to make it a lot easier rather than using this B2 B18 sorry blah blah blah, blah right? uh, what else what else could you use as a feature within Excel to reference that area or that range right and <coughs> this range here instead of using the <coughs> the absolute absolute or uh, relative referencing and remember uh, in this case here it's absolute because it's using the dollar signs which means in Excel do not move if you do a fill so if I filled the the, the formula in E2 if I filled this down I would need to lock this region right, or that, that area which means uh, to make it absolute you put the dollars dollars in front of the uh, referencing right? otherwise it's a relative uh, reference which means this region would move down as I filled right, which you should already know so what is the answer what <coughs> how, how do we actually give this area a label and it's called a range name right so that range name answers question two and <coughs> it's for example I could actually call this area so I could highlight this area and then up in the in the name box I could assign the, the name price per kilo and Excel would assign this particular reference to that label which is a range name so now I can actually rewrite this view lookup in forms of using a range name and it would look like this in C2 and I, instead of using B, B18s and all that rubbish right, I, I can actually use the label which is the range name right? okay question two let's go to question three now <coughs> question three says for G G19, what function could be used to display the message sales sales below target, right? Or <coughs> alternatively, uh, what what messages or how would we actually put a or what function would we put in here to to label to actually tell us what um, whether the the agent has actually um, achieved target or not, right? And <coughs> in this cell, what would the formula be? Well, we would have to actually check to say if if uh, Richardson, so we're not going to look for Richardson, but we notice over here if this total sales is greater than or equal to this guy, then we would say yes, it's it's um, it's it's met target. Right? If it's less than this value, it means it's it's below target, right? So you notice I just said if this value is less than this guy, then we say below target, right? So this function would look like if F19, so F19, we go down here, so 395, so if F19 was greater than or equal to, and you notice we're using absolute values here because when we fill this function down, we don't want this, this cell K18 moving anywhere, right? So if it's greater than this value, greater than or equal to it, we would say met target. And you notice because I want to show a message, I have to put the double quotes in. Uh, if I if I just put in met target with a space, uh, it would give me an error. But if I just said uh, target, uh, it would look for a range name instead of this text being shown. Right? So if it's greater than a thousand, met target. Otherwise, Show, show us the, the message saying sales below target. Right? So that's question three. Question four says G2. So G2 over here says is there a discount or not? And what we want to do is actually show is there a discount or not if um, <coughs> if the the values the values over here were, were um, like if Richardson's sale of 50 kilos below uh, boneless boneless trap. Do we actually pay pay a um, uh, a discount? Right now, if we have a look at our data over here, discounts only apply if the if the order is greater than a thousand dollars, greater than this value here. So discount is a thousand applies only if our total sales is is more than um, <coughs> more than a thousand 
$1,000. <coughs> Which means, once again, we have to say, if this order cost is more than this, this discount value perimeter, then we have to uh, show <coughs> show uh, uh, yes that it is uh, is applied for discount. But if it's less, if this is less, then we want to say no. Right? So it's yet again another if function. So we would actually say if F two, which is the order cost, so F two is greater than this guy, this guy here, which is our discount uh, mark, uh, discount parameter, the limitation. Um, if it's greater than that, then say yes, apply um, discount. If it's not, say no. Right? And once again, you notice we're using absolute reference in here. So if we do a fill on this function, it, it'll it'll be locked on this uh, discount uh, parameter. And also. Here you notice we've got the double quotes so that we see the message or the string saying yes. Otherwise, it'd be looking for uh, a range name assigned with some kind of parameter. So there's question four. Question five says for uh, cell I I15, which is this guy here. What we want to do is we want to see uh, a calculation in there to show us the total weekly sales, right? So uh, if we're actually going to do a total, we have to sum things. And to get this uh, main um, this total value, we have to sum all of the values in this column. Right? So we would say sum sum everything from i two to i fourteen. Right? So sum all of this, and the function is there. And you notice we don't have to actually do uh, absolute, we can just do relative referencing because we're not going to be doing a fill down here. Right? So it's up. You can, you can if you really want to. You can do absolutes, but not really necessary. All right. Question six. Right. Question six is brief. Briefly describe two benefits, and I'm going to do a few more uh, of why you would actually use this uh, spreadsheet right? as a fish fish sales place on a weekly basis. Right. And the first one obvious is that uh, we can actually have a look at the agent's performance. So we can actually look at the agents that we've got hired and we can see what is their performance for the week. Okay. And you notice the totals here, there's a sum here of all these totals and that total has to add up to the entire list here. If they don't match, obviously there's some kind of uh, mis misbalance, that's a good double check. But we can look at agent performance. We can also see which fish actually sold the best right? and so we could if we wanted to we could actually do a count of which ones were, got sold the most um, or we could even do by kilos how much um, how many kilos or how much money we made out of it and so forth so that's one option we can see <coughs> uh, like on a weekly basis how much are we actually selling of these fish so we could look at the kilos and actually find out um, you know, how much did we actually sell of uh, the trout? How much of the salmon and so forth? So <coughs> you can quickly, quickly put in a summary option here to actually do a calculation and see which one, uh, which, uh, how many kilos we actually sell, sold of everything. Right? Uh, you could adjust the discount rates. So these, the formulas in here are running off these discount percentages. So we could adjust it to see whether we, <coughs> whether we could. You know, adjust the discount to attract more customers if we really wanted to. Right? Um, we can adjust <coughs> the fish types or the discounts, right? If we had individual individual calculations for the fish types for the discounts, we could actually say, oh, you know, discount across here, say, given five percent, three percent, so forth, and we could add another column in to give us the type of fish, and so we could. We could add functionality by putting in another column here for, uh, well, fillet will be 3% discount you know, on top and so forth. Right? So <clears throat> you can quickly calculate uh, things by, by adding functionality or adding columns if you needed to. Right? We can track the cash flow. So we can look, see, um, oh, basically it's self explanatory. We can see how much uh, total orders, how much discount uh, we actually charge and so forth. Right? We can obviously look at the total weekly sales, right? So we can we can have the sum as we did previously in, in the last question. Um, if we actually kept this on a worksheet by worksheet within our workbook, 
of the uh, Excel, we could then start comparing WICs and start doing forecasting and budgeting for you know, future sales. So we could see what did we do in this week, what, what, what did we do in the previous one, is there a trend, uh, do we drop products and so forth, almost the same sort of analysis as you did in your assignment. Right? And last one as well, which is a good one, uh, depending on the staff performance, we could actually include here uh, some kind of um, calculation to say staff bonus. So if staff met some kind of um, you know a larger <coughs> um, larger sales, we could actually give you know the the agents the uh, sales and commission agents we could give them extra you know, like a bonus right if we needed to. It just means adding another column and so forth. Right. So, so the power of Excel is quite useful. You, you'll see it once you actually go out in industry. We guarantee you'll be using it. Now, uh, I think it's the last question. Uh, question seven says, for cell F19, so if we have a look at F19 here, how do we calculate Richardson, uh, all the sales for Richardson? Right? So obviously what we would look for is we would have to look for Richardson through this list over here. So we look for Richardson through the list over here, and every time we saw Richardson, we would have to add the appropriate value to itself, right? So if we went down over here to, uh, let's say, Naniev, right? So if I picked Naniev and I went down the list here, I'd go, oh, there's one there, I would add that. Then further on, we'd find it again, add that to these totals, right? And it'd just keep adding every time it found an any of you, it would give me a grand total. So this, the, the function here is called the sum if, right? And we know sum if has three parameters. <clears throat> it has the range where you're looking for a particular criteria, which is Richardson. So you have to specify this range. Then we look at criteria and a range of where we actually add things, right? And the function would look like this. So sum if of b2 to b14, so b2 to b14, and we know we know the criteria was e9, which was Richardson, uh, e19, which is Richardson in this case, and the adding adding uh, region is i2 to i14, which is here. The important thing with sum ifs. The regions must be the same size, so we don't want this one to go down here and this one up here, right? They have to be the same size. And remember, absolute referencing for the regions that we're looking for, because over here, if, if I drag this down, the only relative address I want is the one that corresponds to the name, so that will be incorrect, which makes no dollar signs. But the other two areas have to be locked, which means absolute referencing. Right, that'll do. All the best, guys.